How you doing folks? Well, parts have been painted, parts have been bought, and now it's time to make a start on reassembling the front subframe for my 1974 MGB. <laughs> Okay, starting with this, this is the front subframe, front cross member itself, and you can see that it came out quite well in the black two-part epoxy that I used on it. So yeah, I'm really happy with that outcome. What I did was I coated it with two layers of built Hamber Hydrate 80, and then I gave it a coat of black two-part epoxy. This is the built Hamber product, the Hydrate 80. I sourced it from an Irish company, Autopia. It's autopia.ie. I'm not sponsored by them in any way. I just said I'd uh, give them a mention because I found their service very good. So yeah, this is an absolutely top class product, I have to say as well, and did a really nice job on the front subframe. This is the two-part epoxy uh, rust buster sourced from Liquid Technologies Limited, ltl.ie, again in Ireland. So again, uh, not sponsored by them, just said I'd give them a mention. And I have to say, uh, again, excellent service. This stuff, I have to say, it's quite inconvenient to use, but it does give a really, really good finish when, uh, when you do put the time and effort in. The simple reason for it being inconvenient to use is because it's actually two part, you know, I mean, you have to mix it. And if you don't use what you've mixed, then you lose it essentially. But, you know, I mean, look at you, you kind of mix small quantities. And once you're careful to mix a one-to-one -one ratio and only use a small bit of thinners, it comes out all right. It does take quite a long time to dry as well. I suppose you could um, you could add an accelerant to it, and that would speed up the process a bit. Some people go down that route. I didn't in this instance. Time wasn't a major factor in this whole job for me. So anyway, that's basically what I've done. So everything there has been coated inside and out. Um, the inside of the subframe obviously has to be coated. So, you know, it, it kind of makes for a messy job, if you know what I mean. You have to try and get your hand in there with a brush and be very conscious of making sure that everything is coated as necessary. And when you think you've got it all coated, do it again. And then when you think you've done, got it all done again, do it again. And then you should, uh, should be somewhere along the, uh, you should be somewhere close to the mark. This is the box of goodies that I received from Just MGs up in Northern Ireland. So I have a new uh, stub axle for the um, left hand side of the car and the, the old one had had it basically, I was going nowhere with that. Um, the amount of hassle I had trying to disassemble it just basically uh, got to the point where I was having none of it. So anyway, new stub axle assembly for one side of the car. I have one new brake caliper. Uh, one of the brake calipers when it disassembled it, the pistons were badly pitted so that wasn't going to work the other one is serviceable I have two new springs because if you remember one of them was cracked they are rubber bumper gt springs so they're for stock ride height i'm not lowering the car in any way again remember i'm not modifying anything i have steering rack gaiters track rod ends anti-roll bar drop links bump stops a pair of bump stops and there is, I bought a few fixings and uh, bushings and things like that here as well. So I have new uh, anti-roll bar bushes. He gave me two sizes. I think that's because there is actually two different sizes of anti-roll bar, which is, that's why I'm talking about. This guy is really, really helpful. So, you know, look, there we go. So I have to, I have the correct size one way or another. So yeah, anyway, that's, uh, that's fine. And what I'll do is I'll use them. And then the ones I don't use, I'll actually send back up to him. Um, the reason I'm going to send back up to him is A, out of common decency, and B, because I have to send one of the stub axle assemblies back up as an exchange unit. So I may as well just throw the bushes I don't use in with that package. So uh, that is the stub axle assembly I will be using, but it's a case of reassembling that onto the uh, kingpin. And uh, you can see here, for example, I have the back plates for the brakes painted, the anti roll bars painted, the arms there painted. The hubs are there's a little bit of flash rusting going on there. Nothing too worry, nothing too worrying. The uh, pivot arms for the lower wishbone are painted. Caliper is painted. Any little bit of excess painting, uh, uh, over painting, I can uh, I can always um, just remove with a bit of a wire brush or whatever. And uh, this this particular uh, caliper here. The pistons were actually fine in it, so uh, I have a rebuild kit. I got a rebuild kit for both sides. I'm only going to use one of them. So, yeah. Okay, so this is the kingpin in the vice here. I only have clamped relatively lightly. Anyway, it's not on a functional surface there so much. 
Um, so it's just to keep it uh, keep it in place while we're working on it. And I have the hub here all ready to go. What I did was I pumped some grease through the uh, through the grease nipples just to make sure that they're all free and clean. And what I'm doing now is I'm just I'm actually just smearing a bit of grease inside into bushings here, just to make sure that everything is well lubricated before we go and assemble everything, because uh, you don't want to assemble these dry. So now. First thing to do is, there's an O-ring that goes in here, so I'm going to pop that O-ring in. The O-ring is basically just to stop grease and uh, grease from getting out and dirt from getting in. So you pop it in and give it a little bit of a smear of grease as well. You know, okay, fair enough, you're not supposed to put grease in O-rings, but there's going to be grease getting on this O-ring anyway, so why wouldn't you in this instance? Okay, so that's that. So next thing we can do is, I'm going to just drop that down. For the moment, there is a bit more to do in a minute, but for the moment what I want to do is just, I want to just uh, make sure there isn't any excessive play. I have to say, that is, that is nice. Okay, so, that's swiveling lovely. So, uh, given that it's a swivel hub, that's kind of what you want. Okay, so the next thing to do is, there is a telescopic doodah. Which goes like this. Now, that telescopic doodah needs to go in here. So what we do is drop it in there. That's yeah, it goes. Uh, goes oh, Jesus! There it goes. Yeah, it goes. It certainly does that. Uh, it goes the spring end down actually. Okay, so slightly fiddly, but not, by, not impossible by any stretch of the imagination. Okay, so that's that in now, right? So, so that is basically our dust tube. So we are going to smear that uh, kingpin with grease. And then we're going to drop our we're going to drop our assembly down over that. So that's a lovely greased up kingpin because everybody likes a greased up kingpin. And we're going to throw that down on top. Of that. Oh, that is sublime. Okay, right, so now the next thing to do is this is our upper uh, Calibu. You know I don't know the names of word or the names of parts when I'm coming up with names myself. So this is the uh, upper Calibu that goes onto the Stevis here. So it will go down on top of that. But what we need to do first of all is we need to put our spacers in. So um what I'm going to do is I'm going to try two of the, there's two different types, the steel ones and there's a uh, bronze one. So the steel ones go up against the, uh, go up against the top of this and then the bronze one goes underneath the, the actual um, pivot on the top. So this is the trunnion, <laughs> have a look at the manual, <laughs> right so. I'm going to put a couple of shims on here first of all. And basically what you're looking for is you're looking for it to be free moving but without any play. Uh, the maximum amount of play is two tau. So we're going to put that there and then this goes down here. And All right, I'm gonna tighten that nut up. That's the nut that obviously goes onto it there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna tighten that on now because I actually think that's pretty good at that, which would be nice. So uh, being devoid of my Imperial spanners, which are actually up in the shed with the car in question, I'm gonna to have to use an adjustable on that. So uh, bear with me on that, folks. I will, of course, check the torque on this at a later stage, but for the moment, this is absolutely fine. It's just to run it down. Everything will be torqued up before uh, 
the car is uh, the car takes to the road. So So there's no up and down movement and it's pivoting beautifully. I call that a win folks. What do you reckon? Okay, fantastic. That was a lot easier than I thought it was gonna be. I must have done something wrong. <laughs> Alright, okay, so let's put the brake back and plate on next. What you'll notice is in a lot of cases with these type of fasteners, when I have them in, I'll actually just give them a little touch of black paint just to make them look smart. But you see, you don't want to get black paint on the thread, so that's why I'm not painting them while they're out. So, just uh, you know, it's nice to nice to do these things right, you know, and to have the appearance as the appearance as good as the functionality. Okay, I'll wang them in. That's beautiful. That's feeling really nice now. You know what, I'm going to call it that folks, I think that's good enough. Alright, so next thing to do is to start um, building up the lower wishbones. Okay, um, it's another two days later and uh, this, uh, the amount of work, the work I'm getting done has been quite sporadic of late. So uh, I kind of do it an hour here, an hour there. So with the wonder of editing though, you need not know that. So uh, yeah, uh, basically I've now got the bushes that I needed to put the lower control arms on. The paint is dry on the steering rack. So uh, that's nice and it's ready to go. She's looking smart. And what I can do is I can put on the steering rack boots and a new track rod ends and that's the steering rack then done and what I'll do is I'll actually take it off again because uh, it's just going to kind of get in the way at this point in time and it's adding unnecessary weight to the whole assembly at the moment so let's uh, let's get that finished These clips are an absolute pain in the ass and I'm thinking Jubilee clips are going to be the order of the day. I cannot get them on and I'm not going to spend that long pissing around trying to get stupid clips like that on when there's better alternatives. I mean, the idea is, I, I think it's it, it's actually just too small to be honest with you. I mean, one size bigger would have worked fine. So the idea is, is that you're supposed to be able to hook it over, slide it into position and then, then uh, Basically, when you have it hooked into position, you just crimp that bit there and then that keeps it in place. I'm not spending any more time on it. I might use the smaller ones though, because they look a little bit easier. Okay, so these ones that looked smaller are actually bigger, so I'm wondering are they the ones I was supposed, the ones I was supposed to be using there. Anyway, let's do, let's do that. Once you stretch them out, they're actually bigger. So. I wouldn't want to be doing this on the car, I can assure you. Oh my god. Okay, so you'll see I used a Jubilee clip on one end on that one. And same on that end as well, so that'll do absolutely fine. So next thing to do is to put our track rod ends on. But before we do that we need to put put on our nuts. And I just gave them a little tickle in the bench grinder. New track rod ends. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that the length of them is basically the same as the old ones, because if they're not, and they're not, the number of twists until it's in the right position is not going to be the same. So, you can see there, one is uh, slightly longer, the new one is slightly longer than the other one. So, that basically means we're going to have to go probably, well, at least three turns more in. So, 
we could measure up, but to be honest with you, we're going to eyeball the tracking on this car before we put it on the road anyway, and then get it down to get the tracking done straight away. So I'm not going to get too bent out of shape about it. Oh, look, there's grease nipples on the top of them. That's interesting. The uh, old ones don't have that. So you can actually lubricate these. No, the old ones definitely don't have that. That's a nice, uh, nice touch. The nut is a little bit tight on the uh, threads, partly because there's probably a little bit of paint on them, which will look. I don't lose too much sleep over that. So, I'm only giving them the slightest nip. And I'll put, the same, I'll put the other one on the other side as well. Nip it up and then that's the steering rack basically done. I will lubricate them now as well. Okay, so the uh, ball joints are, uh, the, the track rod ends are greased. And if you remember correctly, I did say I was going to revisit this uh, the lubrication of the steering rack itself and the whole thing is put together so no time like the present because now the stuff isn't going to leak out everywhere because the boots are on and basically the oil will be contained inside in the boots now I don't need to go mad I don't need to put loads in but another little drop and I'll be happy I would take a wild guess that very, very few MG owners ever do this. So. It's a little plunger with the spring on it. It's gone a bit grubby again, but that's simply because of the fact that there's plenty of geek down there. But a lot of it has been washed out by the oil, and to be honest with you, the whole thing is looking a hell of a lot better than it did before. Okay, let's throw a bit of oil in there. I'm using 80W90, it says use EP90, 80W90 is fine. Anybody who says otherwise is just being pernickety, to be honest with you. Okay, I'm happy with that now, so everything's looking fairly well cleaned and well oiled. Okay, so that's great. So that's another sub-assembly done, uh, which I'm really happy with. That's the steering rack done. So we now have another thing ticked off our list. Feeling. By the time there's a, a steering wheel on one end of that and a pair of road wheels on the other, that's going to feel pretty good. Happy days. Okay, right, I'm really happy with that. So, next thing to do is to have a look at pressing in those uh, lower wishbone bushes. Okay, so there's the uh, one of the arms of the lower wishbone assembly. These are the bushings I got. Now they look different to some of the bushings uh, some of you might be familiar with simply because of the fact that these are actually out of an MGB V8. So they're they're an improved bushing. Um, as I said, I wasn't pl kind of planning on modifying anything on this car, but when, when there's something out that's, you know, kind of in keeping with the car, then I'm, I'm all right with that. Now what we need to do is we need to press these in. Um, so really it's just a case of doing it on a, a bench vice. So we'll... Uh, show you where the bench vice is if you just look down a little bit there it is okay right now so um first things first let's get a bit of lube in place um this is lubricant that came with some polyurethane bushes that i uh, have used on other vehicles what you can use is um basically anything that is not petroleum based so non-petroleum based lubricants are perfect for the job don't use petroleum based lubricants because they can attack the rubber and uh you don't want that so yeah anyway right so that's one uh, lubed up bushing and we shall try and get it 
into position which is probably going to be easier said than done but I'm thinking if we just catch it in the vise and send it packing it might just work out for us helps if you get your finger out of the way there Ross all right so bushing is going into the hole satisfaction is being achieved this one actually has a sleeve inside in it unlike uh, the the bushings that um, would normally uh, be used on a uh, an MGB are in two pieces and basically just get pushed in from either side they're a bit flimsy to be honest with you so this is definitely a modification that I was happy to do so let's see now I need to get a deep uh, uh, a decent sized socket that will go over it. There we go. So yeah, basically that socket is a 32 mil. A bit more. Okay. So we're having three hands would be incredibly useful. But I don't, as you, can, as you may have observed by watching my videos. If you haven't noticed that in watching my videos, you might want to just look back through a few of them just for verification purposes. It's pretty, uh, pretty well halfway through. Just about, anyway. All right, so there we go. Right, so that's that bushing in place, okay? So. That's a, that's going to work out a treat. So, as I said, just do that another three times and we'll be in business. You know, the funny thing is I've had this press sitting in my, uh, in the corner of the bench in my uh, garage for quite some time. Uh, it was given to me by one of the guys I, I suppose, used to work with. And uh, never used it before, so this is the first time. So let's uh, see how it uh, works out. It's not just a business. Oh, ow. I think I'll keep that. That is really handy. Okay, that's another bushing in. And uh, in a lot less time than it took to do in device, plus it was handier because it's upright. So that's three of the four done, and one more. Okay, so we're back outside, obviously, and the next thing to do is to lubricate these lads, uh, which is where the uh, pivots will actually mount on. So, plenty of grease. Alright, okay, so everything is lubricated there, and uh, we are ready to install the lower wishbones. So now... It took me a figure, I had to go and try and figure out which way up these go. You can see that there's a kind of a wider part, so actually the wide part goes down on these. So this will be for, yes, I have the right one. Oh. Oh, damn it! I'm right back where I started, damn it! That goes on there. This one goes on here. bolt everything together afterwards but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put my uh, nuts and washers on there next and we'll get them tightened up and then we can bolt uh, we can turn everything over and work on the other side okay so let's get them bolted up now, I'm not gonna do them up tight I'm just literally going to put the nuts on for the moment and we can tighten them up afterwards I mean, I want to do them tight enough that they pull in, but not so tight that they're kind of towards it, you know what I mean? Okay, so we need to get a few, uh, few nuts and bolts in there and uh, get them all tightened up. So I have nuts and bolts in that side but I need to put one normal one here and then the anti-roll bar drop link actually goes here so I need to clean out that hole because it's kind of um it's a sort of a, a clearance fit
Okay, so the hole's cleaned out. I have uh, nuts, bolts, and uh, safety washers. Um, so, literally, clean out those bolts, uh, bolt holes as well. Alright, now the holes are cleaned out. Might have a bit more success. So that goes in there, uh, through there. Put our nut and washer on loosely. There's a dog in the background that just barks continuously all day. Now, I cannot understand how the neighbours haven't gone mental over this. You know, people adopting the attitude is like, you know, it's only a dog, it's just doing what dogs do. It's like, yeah, and driving people mental. It would drive me mental if I was living next door to it. So bloody inconsiderate of people. Anyway, like it's off in the distance and it kind of irritates me a little bit. And then people say to you, oh, don't let it annoy you. Oh, jeez, I never thought of that. Right, okay, anyway, rant over. So, yeah, see the difference is with these bushings is that the arms don't so much pivot on the bushings as they would have done. Like it's more held the way the upper wishbone is in the T25 that's behind me here, um, where you kind of get it into position and from that point on it's sort of rigid. So that's kind of part of the reason I'm leaving that loose so I can kind of pivot them into position when the weight is on the car and then tighten everything up so that it's tightened up in the correct position rather than tightening at home and then end up twisting the bush. It shouldn't really, there's still enough room, uh, enough give in there to, for the, the arm to twist on the bush, but it, you shouldn't have to do that. So anyway, let's get the uh, anti-roll bar drop links installed, so that's the next thing. Right, four bolts hold the spring plate on, I will tighten them. So I'm going to do that now in a minute and then what I'll do is I'll look up the torque and we'll uh, get them all torqued up properly. There's part of me thinking that by doing it this way it's going to make life difficult putting the swivel hooks on but I suppose that's a, good, a bridge I'll have to cross at a later stage because I just want to kind of get these installed onto the um, whole assembly and put the swivel hubs and the upper uh, uh, the, the dampers on up in the shed because otherwise it just becomes too heavy to transport. It's already going to be a little bit heavier just with these installed because they're fairly unwieldy pieces of metal to be fair. Okay, another little uh, victory. So let's flip it back over again and have a look. God damn it. Oh, I installed it on the wrong side. The anti-roll bar drop links should be on this side. And that means they're on the wrong side. The whole ah, the whole assembly is wrong. All right, well I'm up. I may put that right. Okay, so it's quite a few days later because I've been doing stuff on the Beetle that's come back since. So um, yeah, I'm inundated with stuff in this garage at home. So now I need to try and get this uh, subframe up to the shed. The actual subframe cross member, whatever you want to call it, is actually in the van already. But what I have is. I have two front hubs here, which I'm going to put the cross bolts and uh, sleeves and everything into at this point in time, simply because of the fact it just strikes me as a, an opportune moment to do it. So this one is nice because it actually comes with the, the split pin and everything. So what I'm going to do is this is the this is the lower pivot. So. Take these out. Take these off. Okay. What you have is you have these uh, kind of 
retainers for the seal. Seal retainers, I suppose you could call them. Okay, and this is a sleeve that goes through. And the bolt we don't need right now, but I'll just put it aside for a moment. So now, the seal goes over this here, like so, and one on the other side as well. All right, so there's the two seals on. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put our sleeve in next. The actual hole in the middle is full of grease because I actually pumped a lot of grease in there when I was making sure that the uh, grease nipples were serviceable. So make sure that's all free to slide in there. You'll notice I'm using LM grease, but it's what I had, it's absolutely fine. So, finally then what we're going to do is we're going to put our seal retainers in. We, can, we don't need to worry about the washers just yet, we can put them on after the fact. I think actually it's an easier thing to do is to put the seal onto the seal retainer before putting the seal onto the put the whole assembly onto the, the lower pivot, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so there we go. So that's on there. Now this can slip on. Doesn't strike me as right. I think it should go the other way around. Yeah, I do have these the wrong way around. I was thinking it wasn't right, so to go on like this. Being that these are made of modern rubber, I don't expect them to last any amount of time. I don't know what it is about, well, I know there's some chemical that's not used in modern rubber anymore, but that's not to say that there isn't a demand for rubber-based products that actually work. So it's something that really needs to be sorted out in production at the moment. You end up replacing your uh, lower tra uh, lower track rod ends or something, or you, you end up replacing your track rod ends, and they don't last pissing time because of the fact that the the boot splits after a year. It's incredibly annoying. Okay, so I'm just going to spread spread that slide. Is that? That's not going to go anywhere now for the moment. That's at least held together, and we'll do the top one, and then we'll start on the other side. Okay, so these are basically uh, sleeved bushings, again rubber. I didn't go with the poly bushes because I don't want to make the uh, ride uncomfortable on this car. I want to, uh, I want to keep it as uh, original as I can. So I'm going to just put some of this um, O-ring grease on. You have to make sure you don't use petroleum-based products when you're putting a uh, rubber in. I did say that earlier in this video, as far as I remember. <laughs> don't forget, it's a few days later for me. It's not for you, but for me it is. Okay, so now that's the upper pivot sorted out, and again, I'm just going to pop our nut on there and put the split pin in, just bend, bend it lightly so it doesn't fall out, and at least that means that that's a completed assembly now. Alright, so now. So that one there is that that one's complete. Well, aside from putting the actual wheel hub on, and I also had to put the steering arm on because I only realised I had to take it off to paint it. Uh, well, take it off the old one and uh, paint it. So the paint is drying at this moment in time. It might it might actually be dry, but I'll check it anyway. You get the gist. It's only two bolts. Pop it on here with the uh, the arm facing out the opposite side from the brake caliper. So I'll put that aside and do the same on this one. Alright, so it's time to go up and uh, fit the subframe. So it means going up to the shed. I'm driving the golf up because the uh, I already drove the van up to the shed with the uh, with the subframe parts already in it. The uh, the 
Uh, golf wasn't going to fit everything in it, not without putting the back seats down and all that, and I'm not bothered with that kind of carry on. Where is your man going? Right, indicators. Okay. So, uh, yeah, um, one of the things I uh, found, and it's, it, I have to say, it's great having the, the YouTube community tab because I posted up last night that I was going to try and make time to go up to the uh, go up to the car today, and one of the very uh, helpful uh, followers of my YouTube channel, thank you, Karsten, um, made a comment that I should fit the. Uh, I think it was the left-hand engine mount. I'll read the comment again. Fit the left-hand engine mounts onto the uh, the point on the, the chassis rail before fitting the steering rack because getting at it is quite difficult. Now, I didn't know that, but that's the type of useful information I'm uh, I'm finding and getting, you know. I mean, it, 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 there's a lot of people are out there willing to uh, willing to help out. Now, Karsten has already uh, sent me, uh, he sent me a whole article on, um, uh, he sent me a copy of Practical Classics, which featured my MG. Which was fantastic, actually. I have to say, it was a it was a great uh, great read, um, and uh, yeah, I was supposed to have a picture of it there, actually. And the other thing as well, he did was he was uh, he he gave me a lot of information about why I should put the gearbox in before fitting the engine, and it makes a lot of sense. I know not everybody agrees with that methodology, but it's hard to disagree with to tell you the truth. So I think that's what I'll end up doing. So after I get the front subframe on on this car, I'm going to put the um, I'm going I'm going to to get the front hub sorted out. So that will involve uh, brake discs, hubs, wheel bearings, brake calipers, and uh, get the wheels back on the car, get it back on the ground. And then I'm going to probably shelve the MG project for a little while, simply because of the fact that my big project at the moment is to get this Beetle back on the road. Now, if you're following the uh, if you're following the Beetle's uh, progress, you'll see that there's a hell of a lot to do. I've so far got the wiring harness in, and um, I have uh, gone around a few areas, uh, just putting um, uh, uh, sealant in cavities and stuff like that. Or um, so, so uh, to, to, to quote a Pad Obsession Motorsport, uh, underseal has been spaffed into every orifice on the car so far. <laughs> I get a laugh that. So, anyway, yeah, um, I'll, uh, I'll come back to you when we have the, uh, when we're at the shed. Okay, so now it is time to get this lot here fitted to this car here. No, sorry, hang on, no, this car over here. Yeah, that's the one, yeah. I better make sure I get that right when it comes to installing it. Okay, so uh, I went a little bit Mrs. Hinch on it. Um, there were a few places where I needed to clean up before I actually go fitting things. If you have a look in the engine bay here, you will see that aside from some dust and uh, recent dirt along here, they've all been painted black. And you, you can see along there, I've actually done a job, a job with the whole uh, shelf in the engine bay. Now I will be painting that purple again, that's a two pack epoxy paint that's been brushed on there so that's going to keep everything nice and safe away from uh, the likes of brake fluid and other nasties. But uh, this uh, white stuff that's on these uh, engine mounts will eventually turn black when it's dry, that's actually not dry yet. The black paint is dry but that's not. Uh, I didn't actually paint the engine mount pads before because of the fact that I didn't know I needed to fit the engine mounts before the subframe. So it's just a case of kind of... Uh, making a slight modification to my plans but uh yeah uh while they're drying um i can uh, i can be getting on with a few other jobs the first thing to do is to install the lever arm dampers onto the cross member now you might be wondering why i didn't do that before simply because of the fact that it would have made it bloody heavy and uh i was trying to kind of avoid this becoming too heavy to lift on my own and uh, that's why i transported this up here while it's still half assembled I could have assembled it mostly in my garage at home, but I was kind of running out of space as well, to tell you the truth, because I have a lot of Beetle stuff and um, some kind of stuff from the house and all that as well, so it's kind of getting a little bit ahead of me. And that's one of the other reasons why I wanted to get the subframe out of the garage, because I'm trying to kind of make space to get on with the Beetle. But anyway, yeah, let's get, that, uh, let's get those lever arm dampers installed. Okay, so I've turned the cross member around, so it's in the same orientation as the car. So the, this is the front of the cross member and uh, yeah obviously uh, off camera I did swap around the lever arm, uh, the, the lower wishbones even uh, because uh, yeah, there's no point in you watching me doing that, you got the general gist. I 
I will uh, hang out with them with a breaker bar afterwards, but for the moment, that's on. So I'll do the other side now. All right, I don't want to go any further than that now at this point in time because I don't want to make the whole assembly too unwieldy when I'm trying to bolt it into the car. The next thing to do, actually, I think I'm going, the next thing I think I'll actually do is actually bolt it into the car because then what I can do is I can put the steering rack on, I can put the hubs on, I can do all of that while it's actually installed. Um, it's going to be a little bit awkward trying to work around the other side of the car because I have it too close to the wall and I can't exactly move it. Yeah, I know, lack of foresight and fairness, that's what this is all about, to tell you the truth. But anyway, look, let's, uh, let's, let's install it. Okay, right, so I have a pair of uh, pyjama pants wrapped around the bottom of it. Um, does the job. And next thing to do is I'm going to try and manipulate it onto the jack carefully. I don't want to scratch the paint, in fairness. It took, a no it took enough time for me to actually get this looking the way it is. So we'll try and just heel it over onto the onto the jack in such a way that it's balanced okay not like that all right i'm gonna have to steady it as it goes up so now there's there's bolts to go in here and here the bolts at the back are straightforward the bolts at the front you have to access by getting your hand in there and it's all right when you don't have the spring installed but if you install the spring and then try and do that you're in for a world of headaches because, well, the spring is going to be in the way. So that's why, that's number one reason why I haven't got the spring installed off the car, okay? Because then I'd have to put that bolt in and try and find a way of holding it in place while I do all the other work, and it's just a faff. Uh, the second reason is I can use the weight of the car to compress the spring to put the, uh, to put the hub on, and uh, that to me just strike, it just seems to me like a better idea. So that's what I'm going to do. So uh, yeah, let's... Uh, Let's get the bolts in. I have new bushes for it as well. It's the one, one of the few places on the car I actually have poly bushes for it because of all the bushes, I don't want to have to change again. These are definitely number one. And I don't know what it is about modern rubber, part, rubber components. They just, it's crap. Okay, so there we go. So let's see. Um, we'll have a, have a gander at this now in a second. So... There's obviously a flat one then that goes against the uh, the square plate here. Yeah, I could I could have cleaned them up, but they're fine. And there's also two different lengths, which is the other thing I'm noticing. Okay, so there's two different types of bushes here. There's the flat ones, which go against this uh, square plate here. Okay, so pop the flat ones on first, and just squeeze down over that. There we go. They didn't come with any lubricant, and to be honest with you, I don't see, the, see any reason why I would need to use lubricant. They don't move as such. They're just mount, uh, they're just mount pads. So, I take all of the nuts off, get rid of the old pads. They're not actually in that bad condition, in actual fact. They probably would have been all right, but, you know, if you're here, why wouldn't you change them, to tell you the truth? Like, I mean, it's, you know, there's no point in economising on stuff like that when you're doing a project like this because you're not going to be happy with the end result in the, like because all of the small little worn parts all mount up to one worn car. Okay, right, so there's the, there's the four bolts with their new mount pads installed. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to install those bolts into their respective holes and I'm hoping that the top bush will actually hold the bolt in place while I'm trying to jockey everything into position here. So uh, we'll, we'll see. Okay, so the short bolts will go in the back, in here, okay? And it, you put that in there, and then there is the other pad that goes down on this, okay? Incidentally, I did paint the place on the car where this is going to mount up against, so that won't need to be addressed again. So in case anybody's wondering, why am I installing it to have to remove it to paint everything again? It is painted. Uh, it's painted in black epoxy, but that's not going to matter. You're not going to see it anyway. All right. So now, I'm going to push that down. Uh, if you remember, I left those nuts loose because you're going to need to tighten them when the suspension has sort of found its natural position. All will become obvious in the, in the not-too-distant future. All right, so there's the long bolt. Okay. 
you kind of have to go in and come at it from the other direction if you know what I mean it's fiddly so you wouldn't want to be doing that with the spring installed you know what I mean yeah okay I'd say we'll probably just have to try and find our position with the back ones and then feed the bottom to feed the front ones in afterwards because uh, they're not intended they're not uh, inclined to stay put which is a bit irritating but I'll get them into the holes anyway first of all and then I can kind of worry about that afterwards yeah so those they're tapered bolts but that's not inclined to stay in there so okay so look at least we have these ones in place so if we offer that up and I can get them into the holes and then just get the nuts on nuts and washers on on that side then I can push them up through the holes and try and get them tightened up then afterwards he says confidently all right so let's make sure you guys can see what we're at I think so as, as well as I can anyway <laughs> all right so you guys can watch from up here then so you'll be able to see what I'm doing as I ease this into position or hand fisted into position Ah, yeah. There goes the bolts after falling out. So, plan B is just to squeeze it up against it and I'll try and get the bolts back in first of all. Okay, so it's squeezed up against it now. So, what I need to try and do now is get the bolts through the holes and um, then if I can get the nuts and washers on, then we're in business. So, let's see how we get on here. Oh, there's one. Okay, let's get the nut and washer on that now straight away. All right, so now I know that the subframe is not gonna fall out on me. So I'm gonna try and get the other rear one on. I wouldn't want it to fall at this point because it would just bend the bolt or do damage, but it's not kind of going anywhere as such. So center up the pad so it's squared away. May need a few taps with a mallet, but it's uh, it's it's in the hole. So I've just got a, a bait and stick. Mallet is better because you're not gonna mushroom the bolt it's a pin really it's, it's treaded on both ends it's not all right so there's number two in i get the impression number three and four are not going to be as straightforward Uh, by the way, my intention was to put the steering rack um, or the, the engine mounts in before the steering rack, but unfortunately, I forgot to bring the engine mounts with me, and I'm not going down to get them again. I'll just get that out of your way. I just noticed you're probably not going to be able to see much with that. Okay, so we've one and two on, so now we can get a third one in there. Then we're definitely in business, and then I can just tighten them all home. having an assistant might be handy I have to hold the bolt on one side <laughs> alright I 
three to four are in, it's just not tight yet. So number four I, know I need to put in now. And then I can tighten them home and then that's basically the, the heavy part done. Well, in theory anyway. But that's great, I mean that means that uh, the front subframe is in place. That's a big job done in this car. Excellent. Right, okay. So let's uh, let's get the impact going on them and see if I can buzz them down home without having to hold them with a spanner. Wishful thinking at its best, but let's see. I'm thinking they're three quarter, but I can't remember. Yes. Three quarter it is. I said before in one of my previous videos, if you're ever doing a job like this, impact guns have gotten so cheap and you don't need a compressor for them anymore. If you're doing anything like this, where you're getting heavy, heavily into car maintenance, go and buy an impact gun. I personally really like the Ryobi ones. Excellent. Happy days, folks. The subframe is now in, so I can let the jack off now. And the next thing we can do is put our swivel hubs on with the springs. So that's a massive victory. So I'm gonna gingerly let the, let the jack off. Lovely. It can't really go anywhere, can it? So. Victory is mine. Well, it's all of ours. You're part of it, really, in a sense. You're watching, aren't you? So, uh, right, so that's that. So brilliant, um, yeah, uh, swivel hubs, springs, get the uh, bolts in. I already put the, damp uh, the, the bushings in uh, the other day, as you saw earlier in the video. So um, yeah, let's, uh, let's get that done. By the way, I am actually going to do the wheel bearings, hubs, brake discs, brake calipers as a separate video because this video is already getting long enough. So I'm gonna treat that as a sort of a separate job. Uh, so I'm not gonna be putting the car back on its wheels in this video, but I'll be uh, I'll be going as far as kind of having the springs in and everything. So, so that should be uh, that should be enough to keep you occupied. Okay, so my method of doing this is going to involve putting the swivel hub on the bottom, um, putting the spring in place, getting the jack underneath it, jacking the whole assembly up, getting the pin in the top. So we need to have the damper down up against this bump stop because we don't want to lift it too high, and then getting the top pin in. Makes it sound easy, doesn't it? So, right, so let's uh, get our split pin out. Put that aside. And just put the bolts in for safekeeping, you know? All right, so. Now, what I will do is, at a later stage, I'm gonna go around everything on the front suspension, steering and brakes with a torque wrench, and I'm gonna torque everything up to the, the specified value in the manual. Make sure that we're all 100% uh, in, in that regard. So, you know, the, the, when it comes to certain things like, you know, look like the bump stops and that as well, it doesn't matter if a bolt came loose. You wouldn't want it to come loose, but, you know, it's not the end of the world if it does. Whereas with other components, you really, there's no margin for error with them. You little bastard, you. There we go. 
See, sometimes you just have to swear at them. Right, okay, so I'm just going to put that on loosely. Alright, so I'll just wind it in a little bit with the impact gun, but I'm not going to go sending it. There we go, right. So that's that's the bottom end, okay. So now that will go in there. But what we need to do is we need to put the spring in first of all and we need to jack everything up. So this is where things could get interesting or it could be straightforward. I've said it now. It's gonna break my bloody heart, isn't it? Usually what happens is the one that you're watching goes straight forward and the, the one that I do on my own doesn't. That's why when I was disassembling the subframe, I was going to just do the other side off camera. But it fought me every step of the way, so I actually ended up filming it. Alright, so there we go. So there's the, the bolt out. Now, you see this bolt has a, uh, it's kind of a D shape. And that goes up against the shoulder on the upper wishbone. So... See now. Make sure it goes through, and it doesn't. So that leads me to believe that I need to undo that there. Let's get it back out again. All right, so let's undo that bolt. I need a spanner for that. Okay, so that uh, that's loose and straight away it uh, allowed for a little bit of wiggle room between the two sides of the arms, so that's good. So we should be in business now. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get the spring in, we're gonna jack it up, and we're gonna see how we get on. Alright, so now the weight of the car is now on it, it's just lifted off the, uh... oh. still miles away, <laughs> I was kind of afraid of this, the engine's not in the car, shite, so with the engine and gearbox out, the uh, the weight of the, the weight, there's not much weight in the front suspension. And the problem is, is the springs aren't going to fully compress. I wonder if I took the bump stops off, would that allow the damper to go down fully? Bit of a pain to have to do that, but like, shit on it. Just get that out of the way. Just try and... Maybe we're, we're not that far off. The other thing is getting those bushings in between that. It's going to be fun as well. So I think what I need to do is I need to take off, take out that bolt at the back on the pivot for the lever arm and get that in as well. Let's see if I can get the height first of all. I'll just jack it a bit more. I'm kind of just trying to push a little bit down. Yeah, you see, I think we're all right there at that. But now, now we have the next problem on, on our hands. 
No, of course I can't get the impact going onto it. Um, if anybody's worried, the axle stand is still there, by the way. I haven't taken that out. So if anybody thinks I'm crazy working in a wheel arch with the car on a jack, it, it, the jack is only compressing the spring. It's not doing anything else. Um, okay, it's lifted the car up a little bit off the, uh, off the axle stand, but if the car drops, it'll drop back onto the axle stand, which is only about two inches. Um, all right, I need to, need to get that out. Okay, so just taking the nut off here after clattering myself in the face with a bloody handle of a screwdriver. So I was trying to use it as a pry bar to try and pry up things a bit. Not my finest hour, it has to be said. I hurt like a bitch. All right. So what are the odds that that's gonna come out for us? All right, so now that's uh, that's come out a good bit there now. So that should allow for this to pivot up and go in between, which it has. How far are we off the mark? Not far at all. I think we might just be able to get that bolt in. I knew where the hell the bolt had gone. Yeah, it was under my foot. Okay. So now, rubber mallet time. Okay. Peter Gabriel had a song about that, didn't he? I wanna be your rubber mallet. I uh, might have that slightly wrong. Okay, right, so there we go. So that's, that's that in place. So now I'm gonna put the nut on there first of all, which is grand. I left the nut and washer on there. I didn't wanna undo it too much. So we need to pull that back in. So I'm gonna tighten this, this first, this first, and then this, this should, in theory, just pull in. So that's the theory anyway, so whether or not it actually worked out like that. We'll find out soon enough. Okay, so there's a good bit of travel on that now. That one is 9.16. Need a spanner on the other side. There we go. Now, in theory, I should be able to just knock that in home and it should take its rightful position. On. There we go. Yeah, I went in with a bang. All right, so let's see if that bolt will drop in. It certainly went in a lot easier than it did the first time. Okay, so I'm going to tighten that up a bit more. And I'm going to tighten that now. Uh, well, it helps when you put a washer on it first. And you tighten it up. At least that way then that won't get forgotten about. So that's brilliant. So with the weight on the car, I can now tighten the uh, the inner uh, uh, pivot bush, uh, pivot uh, nuts as well, which I, which I will do. Um, because that's the way everything is going to basically be set up. But um, I'm not gonna put the steering rack or anything on until I do the other side. All right. So now, that's basically the swivel hub on, but before I've tightened anything. So let's, let's just get a, few, uh, get a few things tightened up here. So as I said, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just wind in those, uh, those nuts a bit. 
with the right socket. There you go. Thing of beauty, folks. Thing of beauty. All right, so that's side number one done. So now to do the other side. Isn't it always the way that a job you think is going to be simple ends up being complicated for one reason or another? The installation of the steering rack is not a straightforward affair on an MGB. There is shims, and the shims basically control the positioning of the steering column relative to the, the rack itself. And if you don't get the shims right, you end up with the UJ in the steering column shaft binding up and... Um, yeah, can't be having that. So there is actually a bit of work involved in it. And to be honest with you, I'm going to do it in a different video. Um, all I'm going to do is I'm going to just bolt up the uh, bolt up the steering rack loosely at the moment. And um, actually, no, I'm not even going to do that. To be honest with you, I think at this point in time, I'm I'm quite happy that I've uh, accomplished a good bit here. So yeah, it's there's a lot involved in that. And um, yeah, I, whether I want to tackle it today or not, I think to be honest with you. That's the type of job I'm going to tackle when I'm doing the hubs, brakes, all that sort of stuff, get the steering and everything like that taken care of in the same process. So, yeah, basically the end result is that I now have front suspension in the MG, which is fantastic. And when I rebuild the hubs, I can actually drop it back onto its wheels and I can then roll it around. Obviously without a steering rack, it's going to be a pain in the ass to do that, but, you know, I'm not, as I said, I'll do the whole process in a separate video because you know i have already i already imagined this video is going to be about an hour and a half long and ain't nobody got time for that um plus i'm tired and also the uh, beetle needs work and i have an exam to study for so look i'm gonna leave it there folks and uh, this has been definitely one of those jobs that uh, has snowballed on me there's a huge amount of work involved in rebuilding it and uh, it's not over yet I did um, strip the threads on the bolt as well, uh, I'll show you that now in a second, which I'm not overly happy with, but it's a simple case of replacing the bolt, and yeah, I just have to get the replacement. And also, I'm going to install the anti-roll bar, the anti-roll bar bushings, and the uh, yeah brakes, hubs, steering, all that. and another day's work so look i'm gonna leave it there thanks very much for watching folks please don't forget to like and subscribe and follow me on my progress on this mgb which we're going to get back on the road eventually and my 1974 beetle which is thankfully back in my hands so i will chat to you soon thanks for watching yeah here's where i sent one too many yoga doggas basically i was trying to pull this whole assembly in by tightening that first and then that and then that but um that uh, bolt wasn't having it so unfortunately it's treadless so I'm gonna need to get a new bolt and of course it wouldn't be a it wouldn't be a standard bolt that I'd have in my toolbox or something like that it has to be that d-shaped affair that goes through the top uh, trunnion so anyway that's a bit of a pain in the ass so I'll have to get a new one of them um, ah, minor setbacks folks minor setbacks anyway look I'm not gonna be doing anything more in the car today anyway so I mean I have time to get a uh, get that type of stuff. I'm going to need to get back to this lump at some stage as well.